are dark zones in our genomes? They're dark because some regions are hidden, making them hard to map. I'm an artist who writes and draws about amazing, fantastic developments in genomic science. And I want to show you what's coming soon that will illuminate the dark zones of our genomes. Once upon a time, in the olden days, only a few humans had their DNA sequenced. So scientists could build a reference genome. The reference is a huge database of genetic variants specific to our specific to our species. But we think we know a lot more now, don't we? Or do we? Have you had your DNA sequence by a direct consumer company like 23andMe? Raise your hands. Some of you, 23andMe? Oh, I see a few hands. All right, maybe 10% of you. Well, congratulations. We've joined the millions of us in the US now who know something about our DNA. We're genome explorers. And just having our data gets us smarter about our own biology. But did you know that direct-to-consumer companies test less than 1% of our DNA? And they only identify common variants and only in genes that code for protein. 99% of our genome is non-coding DNA, the regions between our genes. But imagine if we had all of our data and a report that would explain the vast complexity of our genetic variants. Wow, that would be valuable. But we don't need to imagine, because when we sequence our genome, our whole genome, with long read sequencing, we can understand some of these vast regions of our DNA. And especially for people who are healthy now, who just are curious about their own data. <coughs> and that is 6.4 billion base pairs plus DNA from mitochondria. That's our genome. And those are the regions, some of the regions, that hide some of our genetic variation. Like what you see up there, a long stretch of repetitive elements. CGG, 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 it kind of makes us crazy. We don't know where it starts. We don't know where it ends. But scientists have been using long read technology for a while now, and they do know that those regions can hide disease-causing variants. Regions, again, like this, to compare short read and long read. Short read maxes out at about 300 pairs and grabs just a short chunk of our DNA. Long read is over 10,000 base pairs. And if you can't grab the whole sequence all at once in one big chunk, you can't align it to the reference genome correctly, <coughs> and you lose a lot of the information. I can talk about it another way with giving you examples of some of my work, two projects from 2005 and some of the work that I'm working on now. The, two, the work in the 2005 is a series of DNA portraits using some of the very primitive early data and the work I'm doing now about the dark zones of our genomes is um, doesn't use anybody's special DNA and the images are more abstract. So to compare the two, too, and think about it, sort of where we've been and where we're going, the DNA portraits were based on data from the Genographic Project, and that was all about the amazing human migration story out of Africa. That data came from only Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA, and was entirely an ancestry story. Where we are now, it's much bigger sample sizes, millions of people, all of our DNA, it's a whole genome story. She's looking at one of the five portraits that I did, <coughs> commissioned by the University of Minnesota, 
to show the amazing diversity in a small community in Minneapolis. And the portraits were of five people who are leaders in the community. This is Judy standing next to her portrait. And behind her is a storyboard that shows more of the genetic information and about who she is in the community and about her family. So close up of Judy. We were amazed when this came back. Again, this was early data in the early years. Um, but you can see the L1, L2, and L3 paths, very ancient, 140,000 years, and how her paths took her to the western coast of Africa. Now, if we had current data to layer on top of this, what would we see? What would be missing? Well, we can imagine it would be just a mess, just a mess of the paths, really complex. And of course, we're missing the Y chromosome. But if we had all that data, it would probably stretch up into Europe. And if it would stretch into Europe, Judy might have some Neanderthal DNA. This is Ron. Ron is a Native American from the Ojibwe tribe in Minneapolis. And he's standing by his portrait, and behind him is his storyboard, too, with the map talking about the genetics and his story, and also with his mom. They were both excited to be part of this. Close up of Ron. I wanted to show this to you because I use a combination of traditional media and digital tools. The digital tools, you can see the fonts, the ATCGs, and the pen tool that I use for the pathways, they're really crisp and um, all the same weight. And then you can see the scribbles and the looser swashes and lines and brush strokes that was done with brush on paper, like that. So again, when we got this back, the data that is, we were just thrilled. It's this amazing story out of Africa, across the continents, all the way to South America. You can see here the yellow lines, mitochondrial, the female line, and the blue is Y chromosome, the male line. And believe it or not, those lines are still pretty accurate. That data stayed pretty true. But again, if we could layer on another layer of contemporary data, it would be a huge mess, a lot more paths. And with Ron, we'd see, now you know, coming into Europe, he'd have some Neanderthal DNA, and also probably some Den Denisovan DNA, that sort of strange, mysterious group of early hominids that were more over in um, the area around uh, China. So now something about the Dark Zone series. It's, like I said, more abstract images, more about the concept and ideas behind the science. Just, just different, a different approach, different ways to show, different ways to communicate these ideas. So at this time, I started with some pastel paintings. New media for me. It was really messy. But I made these large paintings, and I manipulated them in a series of iterations to mimic the behavior in our dark zone. So there's a lot going on. There's inversions, insertions, deletions. I already showed you about these long stretches of repetitive elements. So what did I do with the pastel paintings? So I tore them apart, pieced them back together, inverted them. I really messed, I really messed with these. And they became the backgrounds then of these images. I layered on top um, some of our ATCGs. The whole series really are called structural variations. And this one is the inversion. You can see on the bottom in the orange letters are completely inverted. This one is deletions. Empty squares and some randomly, randomly placed CGCGs on top of the backgrounds. Copy number variants. There they are again, making us crazy. Insertions. And this is a way to show this group of, of images, always with a storyboard that gets deeper into the science. I like to use a lot of graphics, and also stories about current research by some of the leading scientists, like Mark Ebert at Mayo Clinic, who 
really studies Alzheimer's and the genes for Alzheimer's, specifically the CR1 gene. You see, he has found that the CR1 gene is in a dark zone. He calls that gene camouflaged. The data is there, but short read can't find all of the duplications, and so they are completely hidden or camouflaged. He's found that about 26% of the data then is, is lost and not be able to be captured. So, if we want to get our whole genome sequence, where do we get it? The NIH has a terrific program. It's called All of Us. It's free and easy to join. In fact, they're just now starting to return some of the long read. Oh, I don't know sir, if they're using long read, but they're doing whole genome sequencing. And they're starting to return some of the results. Another new group in Boston, a new clinic led by Robert Green, is also doing whole, whole genome sequencing of anyone curious about their data who is healthy now, both adults and kids. And he'll provide that report that we'd all like to have showing the comprehensive analysis of our all of our genetic variation. So as human genome explorers, of course we have questions. We're really concerned about our data, data privacy, security, and we don't want our data to be misused by powerful organizations, insurers, employers maybe, even our government. And what about baby genomes? And what about our superpowers? Well, we have these questions, and we want to know who will lead us, who will give us the answers. You will. Yes, your generation. You're the vanguard. You're going to be genome engineers, bioinformatics scientists, genetic counselors, bioethicists. We really need you. And the writers, and the poets, and the dancers, and all of us as genome explorers. We will be illuminating the dark zones in our genomes. Thank you.